This video is all about the chaos key. And what I want us to do is to slow down in this process, you know, of, of the journey of self-improvement, self-inquiry, of doing the work, to slow down and add some chaos. And for me, the word chaos is akin to play. It's an adult, dangerous kind of play. Often play has the parameters of a playground or a nominated game. We can see the pattern, we know the rules. We are going to be silly or playful or make jokes or catch a ball or get a score. There's a looseness to it, a friendliness. And then when we get to chaos, some fear comes in often because we cannot see the pattern. If we look at certain health scares or economic collapses or confusing things in a relationship, there can be a certain apparent chaos because from our little people perspective, we can't see how the lines link. We can't see the cause and effect. We can't predict how this pattern will rotate or surge or affect us again or leave us. And so that's when we want to bring an order. We want to have prediction and control. And it can be nice and stable. And yet, if there's too much control, we start to strangle the life flow. It starts to become stagnant and predictable and we are encumbered, we are restricted, we have to be dutiful, responsible and predictable. We want to predict and then when we start to step into that dance, we also need to be predictable and that's how everyone's in their place and everyone knows who each other is and we've got our credit check and our police check and we all know that everyone's safe. So. This video is about shifting that and not to discard all of the patterns that we can see, not to throw all of the work out the window, but to welcome in some of the chaos, the uncertainty, the chance, the unusual, the misdirected in that you're not sure where it's going to land. You don't know what the outcome is going to be. But trusting that when you massage, when you start to bring flow, when you release, when you shake up, the container, something else can settle into its place. So it can come back to order, it can come back to stability, but we're just gonna shuffle things around so that things can come to the surface or so that other ingredients or components can be mixed in that we wouldn't have access to if we stayed on our usual track or if we kept going with our usual methods. So I've designed, I've called it a compass, and it's a work in progress and i hope that as you follow this course with me it feels like this path is alive because it is still forming in front of our feet so this version of the chaos key is just a work in progress a rough draft to assemble the elements but to make this more alive what i'm going to do is i'm going to jump up um, and draft this on my blackboard so I'm going to talk you through this in real time with my chalk, like a proper lecturer. <clears throat> and so the way that we can use this particular compass is varied, and that's part of the experiment. How are you going to use all of the variety of these directions, of these taboos, of these energies, and how are you going to bring about a balanced life. That's the interesting thing. The intention is that by going in all the different directions, you actually encompass many different energies. And even though it's chaotic and it's random, it ultimately harmonizes and ends up in, in quite a balance. So let's have a look at the basic directions. We've got the four directions going forwards or outwards. We've got the energy of an explorer. And so the explorer is going into the unknown. And then the opposite or antithesis of this is the builder. And this is the person who's dealing with the, sorry, with the known. On the right-hand side, we've got the inventor. And on the opposite side, we've got the protector. 
So you could call these archetypes something else, but in essence, what we're looking at is a forward energy, exploring, learning, going into the unknown, or someone who's sitting back and building and developing, um, capitalizing on what's the resources that are already there. And then we've also got the person over the side who's going into a creative, uh, innovative, a visionary sphere and imagining what could be. And then with the protector, um, you're looking at what is. So this is what could be, and the other side is what is. Someone who wants to guard, um, to continue to cultivate, so it links around back towards the builder from the protector, where you're consolidating once again. So these are just the four directions. Now, how you could use that is maybe just seeing a direction that you're really focused on at the moment and sort of just bring something else. Um, you could use like a randomizer, a ball like this, which is going to just bounce in a random direction and maybe land on a bit of paper. You could draw up a grid. So simply just take a pen, draw up your different directions. You could roll some dice. So I've got dice here. So you're using the tools. These are This is your apprenticeship into being a game designer. So I'm giving you the basic, kind of like a board game, I'm giving you the basic board, the playing field, the compass, and how you activate it is up to you. So an easy way would be, for example, to take a eight-sided dice or a four-sided dice, nominate a direction, so it could be one, two, three, four, roll the dice, and whichever number it lands on, you have to embody that particular energy. There's more to this compass, however, and I've included what I'm calling the four taboos. Now, of course, I'm just the game designer making this up, so you might come up with other taboos, but when I felt into it, the essential things which we have fear around or that has just basic charge and energy that we sometimes fight with, we kind of have a desire for, but there's some kind of misfitting aspect to it is, in my opinion, Let's start down here in the corner between the builder and the inventor. On this diagonal here, we've got sex. And this diagonal here, between the inventor and the explorer, we've got art. On this diagonal over here, between the explorer and the protector, we've got God. And on this diagonal here, we've got money. How do those feel to you? Sex, art, God, money. What's your relationship like with those? So the intention here is to play with those taboos, to strip away the insulation, allow ourselves to reach, to engage, to redefine our relationship with these areas. See if we do too much of one, we're too hooked, attached, dependent on one, or if we repel too much, you know, are we an anophile, a lover, or an aphobe, someone who is scared of? And both of those, I feel, are an artificial imposition of an energy. Ultimately, we want to be able to play in the space and leave it. And I think all of these things can bring beautiful richness to our life. So you might attribute a different number to these four. Once again, roll a four-sided dice and then start to play, um, say, God and building. So how would you combine God and building? Maybe it's a way to go back and, and you could build an altar or build a, a beautiful space in your house where you could actually have some kind of spirituality there. You might collect a lot of the readings or you might consolidate all of the bits of spiritual information or reference points and bring them into one kind of Bible for yourself. Um, okay, what's another mix? You could have sex and inventing. That'd be fun. So what other innovative ways could you engage with your body or with your lover? What is something new? What's a creative way you could engage with sex, etc.? So around this compass, I've also got a number of archetypes, and these archetypes relate directly to the orbits. So this video itself is probably feeling a bit chaotic, but hopefully you're tracking, and hopefully you're feeling the way that all of these different systems, these tools of navigation, all interlink. So starting off with one of the first, okay, the first archetype is right at the center. No one. They're not really even on the board because they're not an archetype. <laughs> they're an archetype of not being an archetype, of not having an identity. But immediately as, as you come into the physical world, so from being a builder, 
coming into sexuality, that's the creature. That's the red orbit of embodiment, of beholding. So this is where we explore the primal, the wild. We drop into the tangible of what is, what is. And so the builder sits with what's known, dropping into the physical world. And from there, we start to move up here towards invention as the architect, the second archetype in the orbit of beholding. Coming around here from invention into the art taboo, we have the artist, the first archetype from the musing orbit. And moving around from the artist into the explorer, we've got the anthropological and mystic energy of illusion of the mesmerist or the mythologist, the person who's bringing the story and the meaning um, of the culture that the artist is depicting. Coming around from the explorer towards God, we have the pilgrim, the journeyman. And depending on the constellation of the, um, the map of the orbits, sometimes there is a journeyman or a pilgrim before the celebrant. Sometimes they're left right to the end for the quest trajectory. But regardless, you know, these are orbits, they all interrelate. Charts and tools like this are re really an arbitrary division of the oneness. I don't think we're all necessarily spliced as a schizophrenic into all these archetypes. They're just different energies and different names to understand different qualities or energies that we can embody. So on this particular take of the chart, we go from the explorer towards God as the pilgrim, and then coming from God towards the, from the taboo of God towards the protector energy, and we are the celebrant holding the sacred space. From the protector, we start to come into money. And now money, of course, can mean currency, but it's also about the resources, the power, the um, yeah, the current that is flowing through our culture and starting to become a leader and understanding how these things can be um, used to serve. So from here, we are entering the game master, which is one of the last archetypes where that leadership kind of role, looking at social experiments and how we can bring cultures together. And then finally... At the end, we link back into one of the initial archetypes from the becoming orbit of superhuman. And the superhuman is all about intention. It's coming from the void space of no one, and it's starting to come into an intention for things to be. And that's how we, you know, it's the spark of vision. That's that supernatural capacity. It's the, it's the love before the word. You can say in the beginning there was the word. The word is the creation in the physical universe. But before that, I believe, there is that intention. So that's a superhuman that brings us back around underneath. So there you go. That's the chaos key. This is uh, an encouragement to balance through chaos. It's a tool to use as you wish. And I'm encouraging you, like I said, to, to use many different things. You could use maybe a spinning top um, and you could paint different aspects of the compass on that. Uh, you could just spin the top and see where it lands. You've got all sorts of different devices and toys. I've got these little, these are called meeple, which are little people uh, tokens. This is the kit you can really start to build for yourself. I really like physics toys because they do respond in a random and chaotic way. Um, particularly, like I said, if you have like a something that's built to be random like this, which is going to bounce in all different directions. Um, got, got lots of different cards, you know. I really like the tarot. And now, there is a lot of occult symbolism and significance and esoteric meaning in some things like the these decks. And with Open World, I like to steer away from too much ritual and significance. So I'm encouraging you to use these in a more chaotic way than a spiritual or religious or overly reverent and systematic way. Use them as ways to bring in new energies, to randomly cast an ingredient, to, to guide you beyond the handle of control but not so much to get into your head or to get into a deep reading or get into an overly significant engagement with this process. Beautiful. Hopefully that makes sense. Please reach out to me if you have any questions on how to implement this. Um, in your folder, you do have an image of the current draft of the Chaos Key. 
And like I said, this is a tool that's to act as a catalyst to bring in some random elements to your life. It can be very intentional. You might just look at it and go, hmm, I play in that energy a lot or that direction or I've got a lot of stuff on money. Like I'm cool with God and I'm, I have a great time with art and sex, but I'm really stuck on money. You know, you might just use it in that way to bring about that balance. But I also encourage you to just create a physical form of it, maybe cut it out of cardboard like a ninja star. You could throw it into the ground and see which angle is sitting up. Um, you might just keep it in your pocket in a paper form and, you know, when you've got half an hour, an hour spare, just cast a, a die or something and choose, cool, I'm going to do Explorer Energy. Or if you're going to go on a date with someone or if you're going to start a new project, you might go, cool, which energy we're going to start with? Are we going to start with exploring and innovating or are we going to start with looking at what we do know, what we do have as a builder and protector and cultivating a really um, nourishing foundation before we go off into the new? I look forward to hearing how you play with this tool and uh, wishing you brave surrender and startling experience as you start to step into the mystery and allow the chaos key to play you.